Welcome to Community Connection. I'm your host, Sarah Clark, and today with me I have Katrina Rogers, the president of Fielding Graduate University. Thanks so much for coming on the show today. You're welcome, my pleasure. So first I want to start by um, asking about, I want to know a little bit more about Fielding. Tell me a little something that the, the community may not know about Fielding Graduate University. Well, Fielding Graduate University started here as Fielding Institute in 1974. So we celebrated our 40th anniversary, and we were actually founded on March 11th, to, uh, 1974. And we focus on education for the adult learner. So we've, we've always had programs in clinical psychology, education, and human and organizational development. We also now have master's programs in organizational leadership and a good coaching program, and we have a local program here in Santa Barbara called the Nonprofit Leadership. Oh, wonderful. So um, I want to talk a little bit more about higher education in general because I know you're an expert in that, that field. What's occurring right now in higher education that is critical to our understanding of it that we should be aware of? I think the major issues, and you've probably followed some of the national conversation around student debt and the increasing costs of higher education, I think the major issues as I see them are access, relevance, and affordability, and they're interrelated. Mm -hmm. So when you think about how is it that we can help people have access to high quality education, we think about the ways in which we can offer education in different, in different modalities. So that means things like online, of course, Blend, what they call blended learning, face-to-face -face and online, and that that plays into the affordability question. Because as costs go up, how do we provide education that's high quality and at a good price? Mm -hmm. I think another aspect of the cost question is the value question, mm -hmm. which speaks to relevance. And in today, what you see in higher education right now is a conversation around the costs and, the, and whether it really has the value of getting people employment. Mm -hmm. So when you look at, say, undergraduate education, that's the focus. Right. And that makes sense. And I think that what we know that research shows again and again is that having a college degree gives you a shot at more opportunities over the course of your life. Mm -hmm. That's just a shot, though. It's not a guarantee. Right. And I think there was a time decades ago where it felt more like a guarantee. If anybody got a college education, you could get a job period. And it didn't really matter what your education was in. You could still get a job because you had that college degree. That's really no longer the case. Mm -hmm. It gives you an opportunity. And so fielding, which really focuses on graduate education, we ask ourselves, well, how can our graduate students have the kind of relevant experience in their doctoral work or their master's work, they go out into the world with not only these skills that are generalizable, like critical thinking and being able to handle research and practice in the community and, and investigate social change. They go out in the world to make a positive difference. How can they also develop sort of specific talents that allow them to be the the fulfilled individuals that they want to be, that they aspire to be. And those, I think, are two different conversations. One's functional, that's getting a degree to get a job, and the other is more transformational. And what fielding, if you think, if there's only one thing you think about with fielding, think fielding is a place for the adult learner to engage in transformational educational experiences. Wonderful. That's really our message. And that is a different experience. So I'm curious if there's, um, I don't know if it would be called a counselor or somebody that helps um, fielding students go through that process? Yes, we have, it's a mentor-based program. Mm -hmm. And it's not the only one in the country, but we pioneered, we invented this model where for the adult, the mid-career professional like yourself, mm -hmm. and it's, it's certainly good timing for you to think about graduate yeah. education, Sarah. <laughs> it is. Uh, I think for the mid-career professional, that adult learner, they come into learning again in a different way. So when we're 18, 19, 20, and we're first in college, we have certain things we're working out in terms of our identity, growing up, and so on. When we get older, though, we're much more targeted. We're much more focused on what we want. We're much more interested in engaging in self-reflection, building our own awareness, our social skills, our intellectual skills. We want to be challenged. It, Malcolm Knowles, who is one of the founders of Fielding, one of our early faculty, he pioneered this notion of adult learning theory in which he said that adults learn in different ways from younger 
people. And one of them is, is they take responsibility for their learning and they bring a lot to the table. And so learning, learning environments should be crafted to acknowledge that. So rather than me be a teacher that just says, well, here's your syllabus, go learn it. And then you regurgitate it to me and I know that it's done, which is a simp oversimplification of, of sort of a very traditional classroom model. This mentor-based approach is more about meeting you and getting to understand your learning goals we develop a program together. That's a really, in 1974, that was radical. It now is much more common, and yet Fielding does it better than anyone. That's why we use our tagline, the best graduate school for adult learners. Well, I appreciate all the thoughtfulness that goes into that, um, because I, I, it is such a different environment if, when you're going back to school, having some experience and having some knowledge and looking for more. So. Um, thank you for sharing all that. It's fascinating. So tell, I know this year you're celebrating your 40th anniversary, yes. which is very exciting. Um, in terms of higher education and fielding, what has changed over these 40 years? Mm, a lot has changed. And most of it to the good. So for example, back in, in the 1970s, um, we talk about access. Most people who came to Fielding then were people who couldn't get a graduate education any other way because the traditional model was more you quit your job, you left your family, and you went back to school. And what we said is that that doesn't meet the needs of adults, older adults. What we need to do is be able to create learning environments that where people could come together, learn very intensively in a workshop seminar environment, work with their mentor, and then go back to their communities. They'll have their jobs, they'll be with their families, mm -hmm. and that they would have access to graduate learning. Uh, what's changed, so that was new then, and what's changed is that the, you can do that more and more. I mean, these days there's many more online programs. It's really, the invention of the internet has radicalized education in many different ways. And one of the ways that it's done that is it really has opened the question of access. So you could sit here in Santa Barbara, California, and you could get an online program in New England or in Florida. I mean, you could go anywhere in the world now. And what that means is, is that you've got to be good. You've got to be really the best at what you do in the business mm -hmm. because there's a big difference between online learning and what I just talked about, that deep mentor-based face-to-face learning across distance. It's actually different. You can use an online environment, a virtual platform, but it's really about the relationship you develop with your student colleagues and your faculty members. Absolutely. So um, going a little bit deeper into that, what types of programs do you offer at Fielding? So I mentioned we started with clinical psychology, mm -hmm. which is our biggest and probably most famous mm -hmm. program. And when people in Santa Barbara think about Fielding, they often think about our clinical psychology program. It is accredited by APA. It's the only accredited program in the country that has this unusual model, mm -hmm. this blended learning model, which makes it quite distinctive. And then um, many years ago, we founded a school for human and organizational development, which is really a management leadership. It's that intersection, because most of us spend most of our lives at work or within an organization. So it's that intersection of how human beings navigate organizational spaces. So it's, it's very much in, along those lines. It's, but it's also very multidisciplinary. It sounds so, very relevant to the workplace. It and really to, is. To that's, moving through that's and up in an organization. Exactly. It's where you see our nonprofit leadership program emerge from there. It's where you see organizational consulting, mm -hmm. change, behavior, all of that is in that particular school. And then we also have a school for education. That's educational leadership for change. So you'll notice that we really focus on graduate school for people who want to engage in social change, who are really interested in moving society in positive directions. Wonderful. And on that note, tell us a little bit more about this new um, Nonprofit, the program yeah. around nonprofit agencies. Well, we're very excited about the nonprofit leadership program, and we want to acknowledge the Santa Barbara Foundation for their scholarship support for this program. And I think they're interested in what we're interested, which is maintaining and growing a, the economic vitality of Santa Barbara, which means really engaging people in an intellectual way in their own work. So we started this nonprofit leadership program, which occurs um, over two terms, which so it's about a so you know, eight-month program, mm -hmm. 
but it's mostly conducted online with four or five face-to-face -face sessions where you meet prominent professionals in the community who have some connection to the nonprofit, either they're nonprofit leaders themselves or philanthropists or they work in the corporate sector but they have interests in nonprofit. And the, your colleagues are people that you really can learn a lot from. So it's again, that men, and you have a mentor. So you have this mentor-based environment. Um, it can be in a pretty intense program, but the idea is to really build your leadership skills. So it, part of it is understanding the nonprofit sector. So depending on, again, depending on the group, the cohort, the learning plan will be adjusted. And then also, though, developing your own skills in the directions you want to go. So I highly wonderful. recommend it. <laughs> well, I will definitely be looking into that myself. That sounds uh, like a wonderful program for Santa Barbara, especially with all the nonprofits and the engaged community that we live in here. And uh, tell me what the future brings for Fielding Graduate University and the Santa Barbara community. Now, I think, first of all, that uh, we feel like we belong in Santa Barbara. We were founded here. Our founding faculty are here. Our, um, our programs are here. We want to put down more roots in the community. I think we're also really fortunate in Santa Barbara that we have many, we have many um, small schools uh, like Fielding, um, but Fielding is one of the few independent graduate schools, nonprofits in the country. There aren't many. Mm -hmm. There are only about 1,100 now. And I think we can uh, claim it. We should claim it and own it and be proud to be part of Santa Barbara. And so in that light of that, I, as the new president of Fielding, am looking for a new facility. So oh. I'm telling you right oh. now and hoping that others may be interested that we are looking for a place, a place we can call our own, that we can really have more public programs and grow the nonprofit leadership program is certainly one of our uh, one of our aspirations and part of our vision. And I think for Santa Barbara, as I see it, Santa Barbara is really a unusual place in that we have all this talent. And so part of what I think is how do we use graduate education in our community to keep and retain our talent? And, and you know, we already have a lot to go on here, but I think we could be a thriving community intellectually in this sphere and fielding can be part of that. Wonderful. Well, I appreciate um, your leadership in the community and um, everything that you're doing and, and Fielding's involvement in engaging thank our you. community. We're lucky to have you here. So thanks, Sarah. Thank you yeah. for coming on the show today and sharing you're all welcome. of this with our viewers. And I encourage our viewers to go to your website and find out more thank information. You. Thanks very much. And thank you for watching Community Connection. We'll see you next time.